everybody. Welcome back to the Gallagher Shots YouTube channel and podcast. And welcome back to another match preview. We take our attention towards the home game against Arsenal this Sunday. Uh, I'm Scott. I'm your host for this one. And this week, I'm joined by Matty and Joel. Matty, how are you, my friend? I'm very good. Thank you very much. I'm very good on this Tuesday evening as we record ahead of what could be a very interesting game of association football on Sunday. Yes. <laughs> could be a very, very interesting week given results as well. Yes. Leading up to this game. Indeed. Uh, Joe, mate, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing well. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Sun's out. Eddie Howe's mags are flying high. What's not to love? How are you, Absolutely. mate? You okay? I'm good. Yeah. Um, got nice weather here as well. So all is good. And obviously buzzing off the results over the past few games, shall we say. Um, long may it continue. Long may it continue. Uh, before we get started, I just want to give a caveat. We are recording this before the Arsenal-Chelsea game. So anything we're talking about is before that. Um, just uh, for schedules and stuff when we're recording. We're doing that on Tuesday night. Um, but like I said, we are turning our attention to the Arsenal game. It is on Sunday, 4.30 kickoff. I believe it's live on Sky. Uh, I don't think it's BT this week. Um, but before we get into this preview, as always, the Gallagher Shots match preview was brought to you by Magpin. They are your go-to site for high-quality and unofficial enamel pin badges of Newcastle players, legends, and retro kits. You're also doing those cool little key rings of the uh, the sunset kit, the keeper top. Uh, I know Joe's got one. He probably hasn't got it right next to him, but I know. He's got uh, yeah, it oh, it's annoying. So I would show you, but I don't have it with me. <laughs> well, if you if you want to see them, you can go on their website. And their website, as always, is magpinbadges.bigcartel.com. So then, hot off the heels of the victory at the weekend, we turn our attention to Arsenal. Arsenal, Matty. In the past five games, haven't been probably doing as well as they have been in the uh, the rest of the season. Only one win in the last five, and that's also with three draws and a defeat. Um, I'm going to ask you a question that I ask everybody on, the, on this uh, preview, and uh, what are your confidence levels going into this Arsenal game? Uh, you asked me that last time, and I said it's I the, the worst person to ask. But um, <laughs> you know what? It's it's a it's a again it's a strange one. Um, I think. Our trajectory and their trajectory would suggest that I should be a little bit confident. Uh, however, there has been points in these last few results mm-hmm. where I would say there's been little frailties highlighted for Newcastle, only little bits. And the one time that we were coming up against the side, obviously in form in Villa, and I'm not saying Aston are in form, but when them worries are there, that 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 talent is there to exploit exploit them frailties that we sometimes show when we don't start as well as we should or could, that's what worries me. That's where my confidence levels go down a little bit because Arsenal might be out of title winning form at the moment, but they are still littered with quality players in all areas, yeah. pretty much. Um, and we mentioned that midfield um, battle and how it was going to change because of Longstaff not being available. We think he might be available for Sunday. We'll see him. I'm sure we'll discuss that. But um, yeah, yeah. I, I want to say I'm confident that we can get something, whether it's three yeah. points, I'm not too sure, but the, we're, we're well within our rights and other people, the supporters, the players, the team should be well within the rights to be confident that we can get all three points, definitely, considering our recent form and Arsenal's recent form. But I just think, you know, we just need to make sure we start well. If we start well, then where St. James's Park is going to be, then, hey, anything can happen. Yeah, Joe, we'd like to think that we'll have a repeat performance of uh, the last last season's home game against Arsenal where, you know, St. James's Park was an out-and-out fortress and uh, we took the game to Arsenal um, and came out with the result. Um, are you are, are you around the same lines of Matty? Just kind of you're quite cautious, you're not quite sure what to think about this one or have you got a bit more confidence? Yeah, I'm in, I'm in complete agreement with my, uh, what Matty said. It's funny you mentioned about last season because there are, there are a lot of parallels with what's happening this time round versus last season. You know, Arsenal come to St. James's Park, May time, tail end of the season. Even the form of the two teams, you look at what was happening with us last year, we were an almost unstoppable force. We had a three-game blip in April, but besides that, we were just steamrolling a lot of teams. Not quite the same way that we're doing this season, but, you know, we were yeah. still getting great results. And then Arsenal, who were fighting for Champions League last season, but were in a bit of a, dodgy spell of form they had lost the Spurs 
uh, only a few games beforehand and they really needed to come here to have any sort of chance of getting Champions League, same way as, you know, they're coming here to fight last ditch for, for a title run. Um, I think one thing we do need to be cautious about, though, I know we the form of Arsenal is something that we can take confidence in, but, I mean, you know, there's nothing like in football where a wounded animal can just come and bite you in the arse if you're not careful. They're still a fantastic... That's the worst fantastic place a wounded team. animal got to bite you. Like, second worst place. <laughs> probably. Third. Probably. Yeah, probably. so you've got to be careful. We'll talk about that some other time. Yeah, maybe later on. Maybe later <laughs> on. But Arsenal is still a fantastic side. As Matty said, they've got phenomenal players who yeah. um, can really cause you issues. Matty was speaking about how in the last few games we've, especially in the first half, allowed teams to come in, into the game early on. West Ham... Brentford, Southampton were fantastic at defending and they were clinical in the counter-attack. Even Everton for, you know, large spells of it in the first half. I, I'm i concerned that if we allow that same style of uh, form to happen for this game, that Arsenal are too good of a side to allow us that luxury of getting back into it, especially in the second half. So we just need yeah. to be cautious that we don't give them the same amount of chances in uh, in possession that we've allowed some of these other teams in the past. Lesser teams who have not got the quality to eventually see it out. Arsenal do. And that's what I'm quite concerned with. So, it's, But again, yeah. my, it's, there's still a lot of confidence. You know, we're a fantastic team in great form. So anything can happen. Yeah, I mean, Arsenal do have quite a few attacking threats. I mean, I'm just going to rattle through some stats here for you boys. Uh, Gabriel Jesus is on nine goals and five assists. Mikhail Saka, 13 goals, 11 assists. We've got Odegaard on... 12 goals, 7 assists. You've got Martinelli, 15 goals, 5 assists. I think Granit Jack has even on 5 goals and 5 assists as well. I mean, you look at those first those first four players are rattled out, right? That's pretty much their front line. They're all scoring, but more importantly, and more worrying, Matty, they're also getting a lot of assists between each other as well. So they're not mm. just one-trick ponies, these players. They can do a lot of stuff to hurt you. Um, obviously, we have to be very, very mindful of that. Yeah, hundred percent. And you've said about a certain Gabriel Jesus there has missed a good chunk of the season through injury yeah. as well. And he sort of, you know, he came back and scored a couple of goals. Um, maybe he's obviously not been able to replicate the, the scintillating form he was in at the start of the season. But you know, he's, he's had injuries, and it's not just those players though. They have got depth. They've brought in the likes of yeah. Leandro Trossard, who we know very well um, against when he's we've played against Brighton. Um, even the likes of Inketia. Who slots in when Jesus isn't fit? Um, Martin Odegaard, brilliant player, silky player, very, very good with the ball at his feet, just finds that pass very easily. Um, and Bakayo Saka and Martinelli, I mean, like I said, between the two of them, they're putting up numbers that, you know, are rivaling. I think I saw Cristiano Ronaldo and Wayne Rooney when they were in their early days at Man United. So just Brilliant players, fantastic players, and not to sound like a broken record, you know, eight minutes into a, a podcast, but, you know, these are the players that you have to make sure that you're not given space and time to and, you know, opportunities to exploit, you know, space. And it's it just, we just need to have our wits about us. And and I'm, I'm hoping we will. I'm hoping we will. I'm, I'm sure we're going to be drilled in a different way um, to what we've, you know, the style we've implemented against the Everton's of the world. Um, yeah. But, yeah, it, they're in great form. I mean, they're in great form. They've had a great season. Um, there might be, you know, words like bottle in the league and all that type of stuff. But at the end of the day, this is Arsenal we're talking about who recently haven't been very good. And I think if you'd yeah. have offered them Champions League football at the end of this season, they'd have definitely taken it. So they've, you know, done that objective with, you know, flying colours. They're still within a small shout of the league. And they'll certainly be believing that when they come to St. James's Park. So it, it's... It's a massively different challenge to what we've had in, with your, your Everton's of the world and your West Ham's of the world. But I think it's one we're going to be up for, uh, whether we yeah. can, you know, do it. It's a totally different, totally different question. Absolutely. I mean, Joe Arsenal, they like to play a 4-3-3, very similar to how we like to play. Is there, a, is there a worry that the two teams, the way that they set up, could potentially cancel each other out? Um, and it becomes a bit of, you know, one of those... What I used to call the old school Super Sunday go games, where they'd hype it up all week and then you get to the game and it'd just be, you know, two teams just canceling each other out and it'd be a nil nil ball fest. Uh, is there any chance of that, do you think, this weekend? There's always the chance, but when you look at how many goals both teams are scoring, I mean, Arsenal, right? Okay, they conceded four to Man City, but, 
you know, they scored three against Southampton, two against West Ham, two against Liverpool, four against Leeds, four against Palace, go on and on and on. We've also had a fantastic run of, uh, of, of late with the amount of goals that we're scoring. Everyone knows this. And as we've just said, there's goals across the entire team, both teams as well. Yeah, We've obviously got Wilson, Isak, uh, Miggy, Joe Linton's popping up with a few, Murphy's popping up with a few. Um, and you got to think that there's there has to be goals in, in this game. Uh, but in terms of cancelling out, I mean, the, the midfield, I think, is as always, is going to be imperative. But you're right. You've kind of, obviously, you've got the likes of Odegaard in there, who is a bit of a has been a bit of a creative genius this um, this season for them, and it's whether we can keep him quiet. I believe he plays on the right hand side for them, so you're probably looking at the likes of you know Joe Linton and stuff, who are going to need to try and keep him quiet. Um, I think they rely quite a lot on that sort of central uh, outlet for their creativity, whereas we're a little bit more uh, reliant on the wings. I would say using the yeah. midfield as a bit more of a, a workhorse to feed it out. I mean, but don't get me wrong, they still have the likes of Martinelli and, and Saka, et cetera, to cause those problems. But yeah, it's going to be a great matchup, I think. I think, uh, you know, second v third, both have a lot to play for. And um, yeah, it's, it's, and I think Longstaff potentially being out for this game is, is huge as well. Uh, and we can come on to that later on if you want. But I think him starting or not could be the difference for us. And it's obviously a bit touch and go. We don't know whether he's going to be available or not. Yeah, we are recording this before any of the press conferences, obviously. And but there was a there was an article, Matty, yesterday, I think, in the Telegraph saying that both uh, Sean Longstaff and Alan Sir Maximum should be fit for this. And I think Eddie Howe kind of said he hopes that Longstaff will be fit because his foot injury wasn't as bad. Um, just how important is Sean Longstaff in this game if he is fit? Um, is he that catalyst in the centre midfield that? You know, could maybe stop players like Odegaard and Martinelli? It's maybe not stopping them, but limiting them, certainly. Yep. Uh, it's just his, his energy. I mean, it, it, it's a real reflection on the work Eddie Howe's done this season with the team that we speak how important Sean Longstaff is. I think that his importance in the squad got sort of, um, sort of diluted a little bit in terms of people thinking that he's not he's not getting many assists, he's not getting many goals, so he doesn't really contribute anything, especially when we're, you know, smashing teams. But when you see how unbalanced that midfield is when Bruno and Willock and Joel Lint together, three brilliant, fantastic players uh, individually, they just can't really gel together as a midfield three. Um, I think, you know, his importance can't be understated. So he, I don't think he's good enough to, to stop Arsenal playing what, the way they want to play, but he's certainly good enough to hinder them or give them something to think about, or try and break yeah. up their play and set up, you know, moves going back the other way up the other end of the pitch, and that gives them something to think about. So that's why it's really important. Now, again, he, he, if he's trained all week, brilliant. But I think it's going to be touch and go, and I still think that we'll probably see the same lineup as we did earlier uh, the, the, the weekend. So massively important, big part of us if we're going to get anything on on Sunday. But you know, we have to have faith that if he's not there, there's a, there's a plan B. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, we're all hoping and praying that both of the both of those players are fit because no one likes injuries uh, to any players in the team. Um, but you know, it's not the end of the world if they are. We have players that can fill those positions. Uh, speaking of injuries, Joe, um, Arsenal have three currently on their list. Um, probably the biggest name on there is Saliba, who, since he's been out, they haven't been the same team defensively. They have looked a bit shaky at the back. Uh, you know, I think they. They conceded three against Southampton. They conceded a couple against, I think it was, was it Brentford they played the other week as well. Conceded a couple of goals. Uh, I don't have the games in front of me. West Ham, West Ham 2-2, two, Liverpool 2-2. Two, yeah. Two. yeah. So, the, like you yeah. said, there is goals, but Saliba is quite a big miss for them. Huge miss, yeah. I mean, Rob Holding didn't look... I mean, I know he scored against uh, Man City, but he <laughs> didn't look... He didn't look, uh, you know, confident player at all. And you have to think with... The likes of Isak and Wilson stretching teams, the pace that we've got, the the creativity. You have to think that there's going to be space in there for Wilson to to pop up. I suppose there's quite a similar uh, comparison that you could have with um, with their front three when you've got um, Jesus in, in the middle as well, um, getting in between those those two defenders. It's it's a skill that is often overlooked because a lot of the time it's just a tap-in for the player. But how many times have we seen Wilson 
pop up in the right space at the right time and you know get the better of two defenders i think it's something that we can probably probably exploit um yeah i you know, i think i think the likes of isako and against rob holding it gives me a, a lot of confidence to be honest uh, compared to saliba anyway i mean don't get me wrong they're still going to be drilled they're not they're not mugs like one player being you know one player coming in doesn't change the whole whole system whole setup but you've got to think that that is a weak point that we can look to target yeah and and if we look at some other weak points uh, Marty, about arsenal um what we've got down here is uh, defending against through ball attacks which if willick's on the pitch we saw his through ball uh for isak the other week um and, and you know stuff that we like to play even with bruno uh, avoiding individual errors and also aerial duels. Uh, there aren't many. There's only three on that list uh, that, I, that I've seen. Um, obviously, Arsenal are a very, very good side and weaknesses are hard to come by. And you could probably even argue that those three that are rattled off there, you know, you're probably few and far between when they've actually, you know, ex, you know, exposed those weaknesses. Yeah, I mean, I would say you want to try and get physical with them. But, I mean, they've got a little bit of grit about them as well. I mean... Yeah. As we speak now, they've, they've, I was just looking at their lineups for tonight. Uh, no Thomas Part, he's he's on the bench, but when he's on, we know he can be, um, you know, quite quite good at his tackles, quite good at breaking up play, uh, along with Granite Shaka. We know all about him. Um, yeah. But you know, I think that the through ball thing, there is something there. Um, they're going to try and, you know. Be, be, implement their style on us. They're going to try and have more most of the ball uh, and pressures yeah. high up the pitch. Um, against Man City, they tried to do it a little bit, and we saw that it just took Ellen Haaland to do some. Some are brilliant, by the way. I'm not saying that one of our players is going to do the same, but takes the ball down, just threads De Bruyne in, and he's got a third of the pitch to run into. So chances are they might try and do that to us because they don't think we've got as much quality as Man City. Um, if they do, I think we might get some joy there because we've seen even against even against Southampton in the first half, a couple of our early sort of looks at goal, the Anthony Gordon chance, for example, that was through a threaded through yeah. ball. So maybe Arsenal, with them trying to you know press us high up the pitch, they might leave some space in behind in which we might be able to exploit it. That being said, will it be Wilson starting up front after his two goals at the weekend? I'm not too sure. Um, I think we've spoke about this in the past, how... Isak, um, fantastic player, absolutely amazing, great dribbler, and we've seen him do that dribbling out on the left. I think as much as he's, you know, he's our striker and we want to get behind him, I don't think he'll be wanting to stick out wide that much. I don't think he wants to start there. I think he said in the past he wants to be a centre forward. So he'll yeah. do it for the good of the team if he needs to, but I don't think it's going to be a plan A. It's going to be a plan B to keep him happy. But we've seen that how he's juggled them about a little bit just to manage the game time. It's evidently worked very well, especially with the case of Wilson. So I'd like to see Isak start centre forward and then if so, change it up if we have to. Um, but I think but in both those areas, out on the left, if Isak plays there and centrally, we could get some joy with his pace and dribbling in behind. I think Joe's already said that, but you know, I, 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 I'm confident we can get at them. It's just yeah. leaving spaces on the other end of the pitch that I'm worried about. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned about, you know, the, the pace and attack that we have and, and one of Arsenal's big styles of play, I think they've had this for a long time, is defensively they do like to play the offside trap. And if you can beat that and if you've got the players with the pace that can beat that and, you know, players like, you know, Bruno who can see a pass from a mile away while, you know, you've got Isak running at them, you've got, you know, potentially Miggy or Murphy, Gordon or even, you know, Alan St. Maxim running at the players. If they can beat that offside trap, we could be in. For some good How luck. you forget about Joe uh, Linton, uh, man? He scored like twice doing that winners. recently. Yeah, yeah, uh, but Joe Linton, yeah, I, yeah, it's weird. You do, I don't really class Joe Linton as a pacey player, but he has got some engine on him when you mm -hmm. watch him get starting. Um, I think it's just because he's 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 an absolute monster now uh, compared to when he came to us. I don't know if anyone saw those photos of his before and after. Insane, but, uh, isn't it? He's had a Bruce Banner like uh, oh my uh, transformation. Days. Uh, we'll come to our injuries and we'll come to Newcastle uh, for the rest of this now. Um, obviously, the only injury that we are aware of uh, confirmed is Jamal LaSalle's. Uh, he seems to be out for the rest of the season. Um, obviously, not that much of a starter, Joe, but as a backup central defender, we now don't really have one. Um, you know, when you think all three of our central defenders, and I'm including Dan Byrne, as a CD, as a C centre back, because that's what he is, you know, mm. by trade. Um, they're all on the pitch, 
and that we don't really have a, a backup, uh, you know, that you would want to have starting. Obviously, Paul Dummett can fit in there, but he's a left back who just so happens to be able to play centre back at that, that in that when needed. Um, obviously, we don't know about Longstaff and Maxi, which we've already spoken about. There's a potential that will be in there, but is Jamal Lasalle's a big of a loss as if it was a starting player, just given that there's no cover now? Well, I think it, I think we can take a little bit of uh, confidence in the fact that Targets had more minutes recently. Obviously, he started against Everton, and he's seeming pretty sharp now. So, I would say that if you know the likes of Botman or Shea got an injury, in all likelihood, you would just have Burns slotting at centre back and put on mighty Target. But you're right. I mean, hey, Lascelles has done fantastic in the rare appearances he's played for us. I mean, he's been one of the. You can you know you can take pride in the fact he's been one of the very few. Uh, centre backs this season who has kept Erling Haaland quiet. I mean, relatively so. You know, he did fantastic against him. He played against Liverpool away at Anfield and did a good yeah. job there. Um, so, yeah, no, you're right. And do you know what it is, right? He's still a captain. And while he may not get on the pitch as much, he, he'll still have a major influence in the uh, in the dressing room. I don't know if he'll be there. Um, but yeah, you're right. I mean, it's always important to have that kind of uh, that kind of backup i mean think think about it right how many times is fabian share going to go down with a head injury i mean one of these days <laughs> you got to think he's he's going to he's going to have to come off at some point yeah. so yeah you know it's it's not great uh in terms of maxi and um uh, who's the other one sorry long stuff yes Longstaff. um i mean it's it, again it's it's trying to it's trying to play mind games with Eddie Howe. like how many times <laughs> has he said he's going to be out for 6 to 12 weeks and then he's back next game. Yeah. Um I think I think I honestly think we will see Longstaff in some capacity whether he comes off the bench or whether he starts. I think Eddie Howe is very reluctant to change a winner formula if he can help it. Although he also needs his players 100% fit so he won't risk anything if uh, if he doesn't need to. Um but I think his relationship with uh, Anthony Gordon from last from the last game as well is something we need to take into account. I don't think he's going to exile him and just completely drop him out, you know, out the blue because of a uh, forty five minutes of football that you know, okay, he he failed to convert some of his chances, but he was still quite lively. He did cause some issues, like we say, the, the through balls from Isak and Bruno for a couple of his chances. Um, were fantastic, but Gordon had the pace to get to them. So I think he may still. I think he may stick with the same side as last time, and um, yeah, potentially look to like bring the likes of Wilson and Longstaff on as a as a plan B later on in the game, whether things are going right or not. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there was one stat you forgot about Jamal Lascelles, Joe, and that is he's probably the only defender in the league to get two yellow cards <laughs> yeah. without starting the game. What a legend, man. You can oh, still do that if you want. You can still do that. Yeah. I think I think just to act, like go back on what Joe said, the 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 Southampton game when I was watching the match cam and they were coming in after winning, he was there and I was yeah. I was thinking, hang on, I've just heard he was injured. Went on the and he wasn't on the subs bench, so mm-hmm. you know it, it, he will. I, th- I wouldn't be surprised if he's still there, he's still in amongst it. Um, yeah. you know, just encouraging the players, having a word at half time. And who knows? Yeah, we might be yeah. might be two one up with three minutes to go, and he might just go and have a little walk down the touchline, pretend to be a photographer or something, <laughs> take some photos in front of one of their fullbacks taking a throw in. You never know. Tripping, tripping the players yeah. over the tripod or something. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. It is a shame because it is a foot injury. Because chance, chances are, I mean, this is again. This we could talk at length about this with Jamal Lascelles, but we spoke about we spoke about previously how you know players like Matt Ritchie, players like Jamal Lascelles. These are the ones that when things were going bad, when things weren't going well, when we hadn't been taken over, people were saying, look, they're not good enough for Newcastle anymore. They're not Premier League players, and those people have a point. They do. Uh, Jamal Lascelles maybe. He's on the cusp of being an OK Premier League player when we've seen him play this season. But they do massive amounts behind the scenes. Yeah. You can tell that the players have got the, the, the players respect them to people because they've been there for so long. Now, when these players leave, hopefully with that, that, that place is going to get you taken up by the likes of your Dan Burns and Kieran Trippiers and all that. But you can't underestimate how much they've done behind the scenes. And yeah. hopefully. You know, if their injuries aren't too bad, I, I don't think after this season we'll see Matt Ritchie in a black and white shirt again. Jamal Lascelles, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. I don't know how long's left on his deal, but he is a player that again is is coming to the the twilight of his career, sort of the, the slope, the downward slope. Uh, he's not that old, but he's he's you know he's had a few injuries. He's probably ready to go down in the championship, something like that. Um, but again, I just I just don't want to underestimate the effects that the captain mm. has had on that squad and us getting to where we are now. 
Yeah, it's t- I mean, it's telling you mentioned Matt Ritchie. That obviously, we saw the interview, I think it was with Sean Longstaff, and they're talking about the, I know it was Trippier, yeah, they're talking about the changes to the, the training ground and how everyone's loving the, the football tennis they've got. And he mentioned that Matt Ritchie is the one who uh, is the one to beat on that. And then it cuts to a video of Joe Linton trying to beat Matt Ritchie with uh, Bruno watching. And you just think it's nice because you wouldn't expect those those two players, Joe Linton and Matt Ritchie, to be, you know, kind of the two players that would maybe break off and have a little game of that, you know, before they're warming up. You know, you'd, you'd expect maybe, you know, an older an older member of the, of the squad or a younger member of the squad with Joe Linton to, to play together. But it's nice to see. And, and I think you're right. I mean, you'll need to look at last season with Kieran Trippier when he was injured. He was in that dressing room every single week. He was there, you know, more because he wanted to be, but I think he's leading by an example. And I think Jamal Asselz has probably saw that and thought, well, okay, even if I'm injured, even if I'm not playing, I'm still going to be there because I am technically still the club captain, you know, if if, if that's what you want to look at it as. I mean, well, that's what it is. Mm. Um, in terms of changes, Joe, do you envision anything else? Do you, do you think it'll be very much the same, the same lineup from the weekend? Or do, or do you think maybe we, we might see, um, well, the, the, I suppose the two big, the three big questions are um, Miggy or Murphy, Wilson or Isak, and Gordon or Joe Linton, Stroke, Maxi Stroke, whoever's fit. Um, what would be your, what would be your options for those three positions? Well, I think I I think it'll be the same lineup as um, as the weekend. It, you know, it, it really all depends on Longstaff's fitness. I think I think if Longstaff is fit, we'll yeah. go back to the tried and tested method and. Isak, I think Isak will start up front regardless. It's very tempting to look at the way he's performed in recent games against the likes of Southampton, Everton, etc., and how well he's done on the wing, and you know how good of a poacher Wilson has been, especially with his goal record with eight was it eight goals in in April, and say, oh, nine. why don't we try nine? Is it nine? Sorry, well, yeah, nine, and then stick. Uh, Isak on the left and put Wilson in the middle. But as Matty has already said, that's probably not something long term that Eddie Howe is yeah. going to think is um, is is going to work. And let's be honest, he Eddie Howe again, as I said, really likes to try and test the system. He's going to see that rotating these minutes with the players, uh, it brings out the best in them for for one way or another. And so I think yeah, he'll stick with probably Gordon on the left. I don't think that forty five minutes. Um, him taking him off after 45 minutes is, is going to be you know a major thing. Obviously, he's hooked him, realized it wasn't working, but he'll have he'll have had words with them this week. He'll have said, You got into some great positions. You're really and let's be honest, he really did cause them a lot of problems. They're right back, sussed him out after maybe 15, 20 minutes, but then that that's where your coach comes in and says, You need to maybe change things up a little bit. You were doing some fantastic work, but Here's maybe where you were going wrong. He'll probably do that and then give him another chance, I think. Um, yeah, on the right-hand side, that's a very interesting conversation, though, because we don't know just how ready Mickey is. I mean, he, he started against uh, Everton, didn't he? So he could well, he could well, he could well. But then Murphy's been in great form. So do you drop yeah. someone who's rewarded you with fantastic performances? Probably not. Um, so no, I think it'll probably be an unchanged side. In all honesty, like I say, unless Longstaff comes in, in which case Gordon might come out for him. But mm. uh, yeah, Isak to start and then Wilson to come off the bench probably later on. Yeah, I, I do think this whole Anthony Gordon being taken off at half time is is getting blown out of proportion a little bit. Storming by, a teacup, by the media. yeah. Always. I think. Yeah. I think. Do you know what it is? It was a plan B. We were one nil mm. down. We needed to win the game. We, I don't think we had a shot on target that first half. Um, you know, even you know the Gordon shot hitting the post doesn't count as a shot on target. Eddie Howe needed to make a change, and he was like, "Okay, well, what can I do? Who've I got available?" If you remember that that bench we had was piss poor as well. I mean, there was four right, four left backs on that bench. Um, yeah. So there isn't much you can do to change it. So I think he just did what he needed to do, and I think you know if if Anthony Gordon has matured since his little outbreak when he came off the other week. He'd probably just be able to accept it and be like, okay, cool, it was the right thing for the team. And when you see the result mm-hmm. and it's paid off, you cannot really hold a grudge. Like, it doesn't matter, you know, how big of an ego you think you've got or you know you you have, uh, you just cannot do that because it's worked and it's the right decision and mm-hmm. you've got to accept that it was the right yeah. decision. Um, but yeah, I think Matt, you're right. Storm in a teacup. Yeah, when um, when when the equaliser comes directly from your replacement, it, I don't think it looks. I had a, I had a friend who texted us saying, "See, Anthony Gordon's still doing well" or something like that, and I just actually said, "Well, 
created two opportunities, hit the post. Granted, he probably should have scored, but he's hit the post. Like, it's mm -hmm. he's he, this is going to take so like, a, a bit of time. Like, let's let's judge him five games at the next season because when he's had a full preseason with this team, you never know. He could be a real yeah. a real force. Still only yeah. young, very quick. Like you said, he, he was causing them trouble down that left-hand side. They did switch him up the right for a little bit and that didn't really work. It was just because it was like sort of all hands to the pump, really. We're 1-0 down against bottom of the league. We need to come out here and go at them. And we know if we bring out Isak on the left, we saw what he did in midweek. And I, it's, mm -hmm. it's nothing against Gordon. I think Eddie Howe was even quoted as saying he didn't want to have to bring him off. He, if he could choose someone else, he would have. But at the end of the day, that's the only player, player he had to could bring off to bring Isak back on without putting a square yeah. peg in a round hole. So again, mm -hmm. there's going to be people on the internet, on Twitter saying, look, oh, he still hasn't got an assist or a goal in eight appearances or whatever. He's had three starts. He's had three starts. You know, he's had a, he's had an injury as well, a little injury. And I think it's just like you say, it's just, it's sort of a shoulder shrug. Like we're doing okay. Yeah. He's going to be all right. I mean, yeah. Chris asked the lads on Monday if Gordon's performances were essentially what was expected or what, you know, we expected. For me, it's ex it's exactly what I expected. I'm seeing a kid with raw talent who's coming away from a very struggling side and is being brought in to a team and a system that has taken a long time to drill in. He's not had a preseason. He's come in in January, and like Mike just said, he's had an injury. It, it, it's it's going to take a little bit of time. I guarantee you there will be a completely different player come August, September time when the new season starts. And... Yeah, I mean, look, Eddie Howe has scouted this lad for a while. We've known mm -hmm. that he's that, that he's wanted him for a while. It's not like he's coming into the team and then Eddie Howe's going, well, hang on, I thought this was a completely different player. Like, no, it's, 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 it's exactly what we expected. It's going gonna, it's gonna to come good. It's going to come good. Yeah. It's just going to take a bit of time. We need patience. I think the other thing to remember as well is when Gordon was at Everton, I think it was a well-known, and not just Gordon, I think all the Everton players, it was a well-known thing that fitness levels weren't the best among that Everton squad. And where have we heard and, uh, that before? When when Mr. Lampard was in charge of, of Everton. Yeah. But yeah, I, and, and you know, he, it's like with Isak, you know, when Eddie Howe's saying, well, he's fit, but he's not he's not my fit. And I think it's the same with with um, Gordon. He's he's almost there. He's just not Eddie Howe ready yet. Um, and I think once you get him there, it's the sky's the limit. Anyways, we'll come to our predictions and wrap this one up. Uh, Joe, I'll come to you oh, first, mate. Yeah, your predictions for this weekend. Uh, right. As much as I think that we have a very good chance of taking this Arsenal team to the sword, the last few games, as we've already said, we have allowed lesser teams to get into the game in the first half. And we've put ourselves a little bit under the cosh and we've managed to um, to redeem ourselves second half. I don't think we're going to have that luxury against Arsenal. And if we start the way that we have done the last few games, I think it's going to, I think it's going to, you know, come back to haunt us. So I'm going to go for a 2-1 loss. But happened, man. This, uh, this this game is so difficult to predict, but I'm going to put my money on the line and say 2-1. 2-1 loss. Okay, it's been a while since we've had a defeat prediction on these yeah. match, match previews. Yeah. How very, very dare you. No. It's bold. Um, <laughs> it's bold me. Don't... Matty, what's mm. your predictions, mate? Um... I'm going to, I echo the sentiments of Joe, but not to the point of where I think we're going to get beaten. So I'll have for, the dip, for a change, I'm probably going to be the most optimistic. Um, Joe mentioned wounded animals and all that stuff, and you could probably say they are. You know, they're seeing the title hopes slip between the fingers, or if we're using analogies of, of animals, paws. Um, but uh, or maybe out their mouth. Were they carrying the trophy in their mouth? Maybe I don't know. Well, anyway, I think. The same thing could happen. They could start out brightly, and if we leave any sort of gap, then they're going to score. Yeah. They're going to score goals. They've got good finishes. Um, so I think they might score first. I think we'll draw, though. Maybe I'm going to go for an entertaining 2-2. Two -two. I'll take that. I would take that as well. That's a, that's a, that's a good result. Um, yeah, I... I also think it'll be a draw, if I'm being honest with you. And I was going to go two two, but I'm uh, I'll change it because uh, we we like to have a bit of variety on this uh, on this show. Um, I th I think there's a lot of goals in this game. I think from both sides. I think um, obviously we've spoke about Arsenal's attack and threats, and we have probably you know just as a big a threat going forward ourselves. And with Arsenal having you know 
quite a shaky defensive late when they're letting in a lot of goals. I think it's going to be three all. I think it will, will probably be a, an entertaining three all, or we could even see a four all. Let's 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 have a repeat of the olden days where it's a four nil. I don't Arsenal. think I could handle that. No, no, not at all. This will be the last, be the last <laughs> podcast you'll see me on. Yeah, 100%. No, we'll go through, we'll go three all. Um, I just I think I kind of see they're not being it's, goals in this one. Um, it's so difficult which, to predict, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It could this go, one it is could so go either way. It could be, it could be like I said at the start of this, it could be a nil nil ball fest and we cancel each other out and there's nothing going on. I mm. don't think that's going to happen. Though. That being said, we could get off this and we could go and watch the match now and then you get two red cards and three injuries and we'd be Absolutely. like, that's true. We're this could all be invalid. Sunday, like, we're going to yeah. smash them. I think, <laughs> yeah, one and last that's thing. The other like... thing to remember is we have, we are recording this before the Chelsea yeah. game. So yeah. there's always an opportunity for Grand Jagger to get a red card. I mean, so you know that could that could rewrite the centre midfield for mm. the game on Sunday if that happens. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one thing I would like to add, and this kind of contradicts my prediction, but when you look at the reverse fixture with us going to the Emirates and putting in a defensive yeah. display and just about, let's be honest, clawing um, clawing back at a nil nil. It was quite similar to when we went to Old Trafford and we did a very similar thing. I mean, I think we had a few more chances then at the Emirates, but, you know, we still managed to, to get a draw there. Yet when Man United came to us, we absolutely battered them. So it's it's got yeah. the potential to have that similar um, that similar style of, uh, of game where we just come out the traps and like Man City did with Arsenal, just dominate possession, play around them. We're capable of doing it. Capable of doing it, but um, yeah, it's, it's so difficult, it's a really difficult one, yeah. Uh, but all will be revealed on Sunday. Um, it'll be an entertaining one, it's, it's a, a nice mid afternoon game as well, so the crowd will be well up for it. The atmosphere is going to be electric. Um, so fingers crossed we can come out with a result. But all that's there for me to do is to thank you for watching, and thank you, Matty, and thank you, Joe, for joining me tonight. If you do like this content, Please scroll down to this video and hit the little thumbs up button. That will put this video into the feeds of thousands and thousands of other people online, uh, Newcastle fans, Arsenal fans, and anyone who likes the Premier League. Um, if you also want to hit the subscribe button, we have surpassed 10,000 subscribers. That happened last night. We're now on, I think, 10,040. So whoever you 40 people were holding off, what took you so long? Mm. Stick around, though, because there's loads more content to come. But we now... We don't stop in this channel. We're now aiming for 11,000. Why not? End of the season. Let's get 11,000. Setting that benchmark. Um, but like I said, so much more to come from this channel. We've got a canny chatter being recorded tomorrow. So that'll be on your audio feeds. I believe we're doing extra time this week as well. So look out for that by the end of the week. Um, obviously, there'll be a match reaction to this Arsenal game and lots, lots more to come in the future. If you like all of that and you want to give a little back, we do have a membership program. It's $2.99 a month. It gets you early access to these pre-recorded videos as well as access to the Telegram group and some members-only content as well, uh, which only members get access to in terms of videos and audio. But that's it for this one. We go into this one, three on the spin, full of confidence, going into a wounded animal like Arsenal. <laughs> going into a wounded animal. And let's see. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. You're listening, no. right? You're going to deal with a wounded animal. You just don't go into them. Don't go into them. Yeah, that's you do. You don't get a shot for, afterwards. You don't even have to pay for that advice. <laughs> Sorry, Scott. Let's go. hope we can finish that wounded animal off. So no, don't do that either. <laughs> Keep it in. Roll the outro. Do it. Now.